I'm going to uh, talk about uh, two few programs. One is the CBLAS, um, stands for Coupled Boundary Layer uh, Air-C Transfer. And also there's one coming up, it's called ITOP, it's uh, Impact of a Typhoon on Ocean. So basically that's a CBLAS and that ITOP will happen this fall, so it's gonna be interesting. There's gonna be lots going on in that basin here, so we're waiting to see if uh, El Nino year pans out and depends on which basin gets more, more storm. Um, anyway, um, the uh, sea blast has been sort of uh, going on for a couple of years during the 2003 <coughs> and the four. Um, then there's a BAM special issue actually summarized the uh, sea blast uh, science in modeling and also observation of high winds and also the uh, low winds. So it's multi-phase, the field program. In the, the hurricane components of it really focus on one thing that we have not done before sea blast is a coupling. So in the way that we're looking at the, uh, the uh, atmosphere and ocean in a fully coupled mode through surface waves, that's a key. So the, uh, in terms of a hurricane energetics, I want to mention here, in case I probably have to rush quite a bit in the end, is that we're looking at a particular two important process that's a dominant energetic balance into a hurricane. One is the heat into the hurricane that fuels the hurricane and then the uh, drag at the surface. So at the end of the day, each system that will struggle with the two, one is intensifying, one trying to slow it down. So if we don't get that balance right, often uh, modeling having issues. And a specific project I've been involved in more is developing this fully coupled atmosphere wave and ocean modeling with some effect in some physical process. Um, quickly, just uh, tell you that the uh, sea blast observation really uh, focus on the uh, both atmosphere observation and ocean, not only the surface with a lot of drifters, and also these flows actually sampling ocean um, over a time series that you not only seeing the hurricane induce the cold wake, but then at the same time fully uh, couple the system with the surface wave there. So the key of my talk is going to be focused on the uh, air sea coupling in the interface, even though we have measurements, coherent measurements all through the the entire system. So before sea blast, this is a program that we actually put together in the wave uh, coupling that not only with atmosphere model, ocean model, then we added a wave uh, model, then the communication between these are uh, sort of described in the BAMS paper. And the, the main thing is during that development, we realized the wave is one that actually play a key role in terms of energetic, both how the sea, uh, heat flux transfer and also the, uh, how the uh, stress uh, related is all through surface waves. So during that time, we also had a lot of uh, sub uh, the subgrid scale primarization that go into this. So I wouldn't have time to go into detail, but keep in mind this diagram at the end of the talk, I'm going to tell you after CBLAS, we realized this diagram is having issues in terms of how to implement a uh, fully coupled model. So this diagram is going to be uh, modified later on. I'm going to focus on a particular science issue that we've been um, struggle with is how to actually pr provide this exchange over the air sea uh, interface. In the past, the uncoupled atmosphere model always using channel relationship. That stress is proportional to somewhat a form of wind speed. So later on in the coupled atmosphere system, in fact, very early on, Jim Doyle is, I guess, working with the uh, people in the ECMWF has implemented uh, these uh, stress calculations through waves and the, the wave stress is so-called form drag and also the, uh, the turbulence drag, but in a scalar form. In hurricanes, uh, one of the biggest issue is that in terms of winds that highly swirling, in fact, your stress is no longer a scalar, it's a vector. So that is a key um, how we actually need the wave to do this. I'm going to focus on only a few things here. It's a lot of things being written up in that wind wave coupling primarizations. So no longer uh, just using the uh, primarized the, the drag through the channel relationship, we are calculating stress through the wave spectral. That is where it comes in. 
One of the things in this is that there are uh, wave shape that need shelter function. I'm not going to have much details here either, uh, except to say that these set of uh, equations written in the form relate to atmospheres through the wind speed, but all depend on the wave property itself. The key signs come out of all these messy calculations in this couple model is that we will limited ourselves into some kind of a lock-in with observations in terms of the tag measurements. So during that time, Donlins and all at University of Miami had actually fuel program uh, in the tank measuring the uh, drag. So traditionally, channel relationship would go up, but then they find the, the uh, drag is not going up. So that is an energetic challenge in the sense the couple, couple model that time didn't really have much. Um, the physical mechanism of this flatten out in the uh, drag or drag coefficients is this two flow separation issue. One is when you have a low winds flow following waves that actually goes in this curve. When you have high winds, the flow separating out from the waves really is meaning the flow flow very fast, then the wave gets steep. They're no longer following wave, and then you will actually see the wave flow over when the flow over the wave, it become much more uh, smooth. So what's this translate to a couple of models? Um, in fact, one of the issue came out with this, keep in mind, I talk about this vector issue, is that the wave is asymmetric, the storm center, and this is propagating direction of the storm. So you have a higher wave and a longer wave on one side because it's an unlimited fetch. On the other side, wave actually traveling against the wave, wind. So in that case, you have a shorter waves, shorter wavelengths, and this create highly asymmetric in the uh, storm. So this is a part of things you can see um, in the uh, results that, like I said, the wind in dark blue and the stress in red, and the other one is the dominant wave propagation. So if you see around the storm, you'll find some quadrant of it, wind and stress in the similar direction, but in this particular quadrant, you have the wind. It's no longer do travel dominant with the wave. It's, it's separating in terms of wind factor. If you look at the stress around the storm, you will find this particular quadrant. This is the cross track stress. Really means that stress no longer just an opposite wave, wave. And then you have cross very large components. The stress is crossing that. So in that sense, you can analyze a lot of details in terms of how the wave propagation is a sort of a model resolved. This property, you can actually get into quite a bit of a stress calculation. The key still is back to the storm itself. What does it do? Um, in fact, what's the value added to the coupled system? So if you're looking at this side is uncoupled atmosphere model. This is the uh, coupled with wave model. And you have channel relationship if you're just using wind proportion stress, this is what you get in terms of a, a stress at the surface, the drag coefficients. And this is what you would have in the wave part. So the stronger stress in one particular quadrant when you have a very short wave. And this quadrant has a lot of a cross wind stress, which has turned out to be lower stress in the overall stress. So then also, stress is quite a bit of a scatter in terms of different quadrants and things. I wouldn't have much detail now, time to discuss. But in general sense, this um, scattering is coming from the wave properties. So this is in comparison of the CK and CD. As you probably know, energetically, we've been arguing, arguing for a long, long time. What's the ratio of the two? So now observation definitely confirmed. This is a couple of model results. If you look at the recent uh, pen measurements, this is a continue extended over to 40 to 45 meter per second. And then the uh, measurements definitely showing this property continue in that trend. This is C sub D, and this is a C sub K over quite a long period of time. So that we're quite confident that this range has been confirmed. So that tells you the ratio of the two is way less than one as previous uh, Emmanuel 95 have proposed, so in the real storm. And this is what we end up in terms of stress uh, or the CKCD ratio. That's a spatial re uh, the, uh, of that CK over CD. So what I want to emphasize is a symmetry. 
definitely not one portion alone have a lot of weight property in it. But if you just look at the ratio, this is uh, 0 to 1. So if you put this two things together over the Hubble model, this is a range that we confirmed with the C-blast observations from 0 to 30 meter per second. And then lab observation continued to that trend. So we're pretty confident that actually energetically we have um, nailed in a few things in hurricanes. So what it does do to storm structure, came, kept coming back to this, is that the coupling itself is interesting in terms of science exercise. But if it doesn't translate to structure, doesn't translate to forecast, would it be not very useful, right? So now I'm going to show you a few parameters that we care about in hurricanes. So the, uh, this is a radial inflow, which is a key parameter in terms of intensification of the storm. So then uh, the different color representing coupled, non-coupled, I want to focus this red one that is the one with coupling with waves. So the wave coupling definitely increasing the radial inflow and also the asymmetry around the storm. I have to apologize for this diagram since we're putting the paper in black and white and doesn't show quite very well. This only observation I can actually find in terms of radio inflow to a storm is this uh, from Powell 1980 in Frederick that shows you it's not swirling uh, perfect symmetric. It's really very large inflow angle, 45 to 50 or greater inflow angle around that storm. So this is the couple with wave. And these two are the couple with ocean without wave and uncoupled. So really, the range of inflow really uh, increasing in this particular one quadrant gave you quite a bit of symmetry, like an observed one. So that gave you quite a bit of a um, um, science into the uh, prediction issue. One of the things we find immediately was the stress in terms of distrib different distribution is their role in terms of storm structure. Happened to be 2004 uh, Hurricane Francis is one storm um, that we had multiple aircraft measurements. And I'm just going to give you one example of how the structure change work. The top two panels is a two continuous day measurements of Francis radar observed um, uh, reflectivity or winds, I believe. Can. The wind, right? So in fact, the Iowa rim band is one, but it truly I secondary Iowa has to be a wind max. So then this is a coupled uh, with wave coupling, and this is coupled with ocean without wave coupling, this two panel, and this is uncoupled. So really change quite a bit in terms of evolution of the outer Iowa. And this is not by one storm, but quite a few storm we're confirming that it's having impact in terms of structures, in terms of a secondary Iowa, the couple with wave produce much better, cleaner mold region compared to the one that without wave coupling. And to confirm that, if you look at the radio winds, you see the couple model have this double peak. The other two doesn't with wave wind. And energetics, I want to rest on this particular point about model energetics. So intensity is an interesting word we talk about. Is that there are two parameters in the operational world. You have wind measured. This is the Francis over 10 days. That you have wind, maximum winds, and also you have minimum sea level pressure. So the model takes some time. Again, uh, these are the red one is a couple with waves. And then the blue is the one that without waves. So then what you see is that the blue is uncoupled one, sort of captured. The, this is after model spin up. You have a wind that is actually less than the observed wind. You will say model under predictive storm, right? But then the other side, if you're actually looking at minimum sea level pressure, this is observed pressure, but observed minimum, uh, the model pressure is way down here. So by looking at the pressure, the model over-intensified the storm. So prediction, very difficult to verify. The model did both over-intensify and less intensifying here. It's under-intensified because wind and pressure relationship is off. That's the key to forecast later on. And what I want to mention is that with wave, because the stress coupling, the, the red actually be able to giving you a much better wind relationship that gave you energetically wave balance in the system. To summarize that quickly, 
you can look at Chris Lancey's 150 year statistics of pressure wind relationship. So if the model does correctly, all the points should be on that line or for most of the storms. So uncouple the model, sit out there, couple the model, ocean model without wave sitting over there. The red is the uncoupled model. So we're using that as a piece to lock in our energetics. So you can look many storms. In fact, we have seven this now simulated, and they all have a very similar properties. Um, you can go on Hurricane Floyd, Bonnie, and so on, until we got to Pacific. Pacific has a very different issue. So later on, uh, I don't have time now to talk about if anybody interested in discussing this. In fact, I will be looking for a few more people here to talk about this pressure-wind relationship. In the best track data in the Pacific has a very different pressure-wind relationship. So how do we go about that and uh, things go on? Uh, one last thing I want to say is coupled, uncoupled fluxes, heat flux. We talk about the stress and, the, and, the, and the so on, but really, there's so many complexity in terms of a storm, um, a sea spray and so on, we can't really measure them. But if we can measure fluxes, we probably have pretty good shape to lock in. So this is a um, composite of all drop sounds with some turbulence measurements from Zhongjiang. So we composited this hurricane uh, fluxes, heat fluxes, uh, as a kind of constraint for me to actually looking at whether model does it correctly. So this is definitely asymmetry because the storm propagating this way, you get a cold wake here. The flux is only a few hundred watts. And then the front part of the storm, you get to about 1,200. They're not 2,000 or 3,000. Most time model does wrong in terms of fluxes. So if you look at that, this is a couple model produced quite close to that range and also the spatial shape to it. If you look at uncoupled the model, usually domain average gave you 30% or more thermal energy than you really needed in the system. So that will give you, this is my last two slides, and uh, that gave you the, <laughs> uh, the one that, okay, forecast problem. Back to forecast problem. So the, uh, obviously this problem we do know for a long, long time, when the storm is slowing down, this is Ophelia, Bob talked early part of Ophelia. This is a couple model forecast of Ophelia. So again, the red is coupled, and the other one is not. So when storm's slowing down, you have the ocean drop down to 21, meter, uh, 21 degrees Celsius. So by all means, this storm should not survive. But then at the same time, uncoupled model keep on over um, intensifying that. But then the uh, coupled model actually had the storm survived, even though with 21 degrees Celsius, because you are actually in a very warm region that, that sustained the storm for a very, very long time, even though the local SST could not provide much, but you're actually getting the uh, surrounding to be surviving that. So we had a quite a bit of issue about uh, things. I skipped the slides about momentum balance. So when we start with sea blast, we were having issue of how to communicate that interface in the way that wave model calculates something, atmosphere cuddles something, and ocean does it too. So now we realize the momentum has to be balanced in some place has to be unified into a place where now we have a project we are deciding instead of these models talking to each other, we should actually have an interface that have all the waves and the certain things that communicating through an interface module. This way we can actually control the energetic on the system. So uh, I'll end up with this map that uh, we are continuing this momentum uh, and thermal balance over the system that when we have uh, this year, 2010, we have um, aircraft, two aircraft and a whole bunch of ocean measurements. Thank you, Sue. We have time.